let me explain the difference between HSL and calibration by going over this image in Lightroom. Feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's jump into it. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process for this image. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to that part. First, I want to do the basic adjustments. So let's go right ahead, open up the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to just lessen the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to continue by working on the white balance. What I have in mind for this scene is to create some kind of very cold blue background while these yellow flowers start to pop against the cold blue color tone. So I'm going to adjust white blends in a way to make the background a little colder. I'm going to bring down the temperature. So right at this point, you can see the blue tones really kicking in in the background. Of course, I don't want to overdo it to make it look unnatural, but I think right around here is a pretty good spot. Then we want to adjust the base exposure of this image and prepare it for a little bit of masking later on. So I do want to bring up the highlights quite a bit. And at this stage of the editing, I want to give the image a very, very bright look. So besides increasing the highlights, I'm also going to bring up the whites. Let's also increase the blacks. So this looks super good already. However, I just want to point out these water droplets on these flowers are overexposed at this point. You can also see that looking at histogram, we get a clipping warning. However, I don't care about overexposure in these areas because I think this actually makes the image look much, much better. You won't notice detail in those water droplets anyway, so I'm fine with overexposing them on purpose. Now, after adjusting those highlights and blacks, I do want to bring back a little bit of contrast by bringing down the shadows. Just adding some more punch to the image, and then I'm going to continue by increasing the texture, which will sharpen the image. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the clarity. This kind of lessens the midtones contrast of the image giving everything some kind of glowing effect. And for the same purpose, I'm going to bring down the dehaze very, very gently. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to have some very subtle glow on top of this image like this. And then let's bring up the vibrance because of course we want this image to be saturated. I'm going to raise it quite a bit more than usual. Somewhere around here looks nice to me because at this point we get a very nice green color tone in the foreground. Those flowers start to pop a little more and the blue tones of the background are getting a little more visible as well. All right, nice. That's it for the basic adjustments. Now we want to apply a little bit of masking. So let's open up the masking panel and I want to start working on the background. I want this background to have a rich, deep blue color. So the subject in the foreground also stands out. The background mostly consists of blue color tones already. So we can make use of that um, with a color range mask. With the color range mask, I'm clicking right in here in the blue background and you can see we get a pretty decent selection. Now what I want to do is I want to further adjust the selection by adding a linear gradient on top of it, just so we select everything in the background without affecting these flowers. And I'm going to say subtract linear gradient because we don't want to affect the green parts in the foreground right here. Maybe even subtract with a brush so we don't accidentally make these water droplets look darker. All right, but that's looking good. Now what I want to do to make the background darker, that's simple. Let's just bring down the exposure right around here. I'm also going to increase the contrast. This not only adds contrast, but it also has an effect on the vibrance. You can see the background getting a little more saturated as I push the contrast. However, I wanna push the color tones a little more by bringing down the temperature for the background, giving it this rich blue color tone. Also, I'm going to bring down the shadows just to make the background a little darker. And with just one mask, you can see we made the subject pop much, much more. Beautiful. 
Now let's also add some kind of light effect. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to make it nice and big like this and I'm going to place it right here in the center. I'm also making sure the center of this radial gradient lies outside the image just to get a more natural look. And now to add this light effect, I'm going to bring up the blacks all the way up and while we're at it, let's also bring up the whites. And as you can see, this creates this lovely looking light coming down from the top. Wonderful. Finally, let's add one more linear gradient for the foreground, which I want to make slightly darker. And for that, I'm simply going to bring down the shadows all the way. Maybe not all the way, but right around here. And maybe we could also drop the whites. All right, wonderful. That's the image after the masking. There isn't anything more going on. Just these three masks turn this image into a much better version. Now let's take a closer look on the color grading. And for this shot, this includes HSL and calibration adjustments. Both HSL and calibration do have their own panel in Lightroom. Usually for my workflow, I start with HSL, then maybe some split toning, and finally the calibration settings. However, that is totally up to you and what you prefer. I know a lot of photographers actually like to start in a calibration panel. But what's the difference? Let's start with the HSL adjustments in the color mixer. The HSL adjustments allow you to change the hue, the saturation, and luminance of these eight color tones. While in the calibration panel, you will find hue and saturation sliders for the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. We can change the luminance in here, but we have an additional slider to adjust the tint of the shadows. Let's take a look at the HSL settings first. We can make these yellow flowers look orange by bringing down the yellow hue. But as I bring down the hue, you can see this will also affect the foreground since we do have some yellow tones in here as well. To prevent the foreground from becoming too dirty looking, I'm bringing up the green hue, just like this, and thus we can make the grass look a little fresher. Wonderful. Also, we can add a little more Zion to the blue background by bringing down the blue hue. This adds a very nice color contrast between the flowers and the background. And this helps to make the subject pop. Okay, notice how we can target these very specific colors and we can guess the outcome here rather precisely. If we adjust yellow, only yellow areas of the image will change. The same goes for saturation and luminance. We can do very targeted adjustments to some colors while others won't be affected. I want to bring up the main color tones for this scene. So yellow, green, and blue. And we can use luminance settings to change a color's brightness. So using the blue slider and bringing it down, we can make all blue parts of the image darker. On the other hand, if we bring up the yellow slider, we can make the flowers brighter and we can create some more contrast this way. This looks great, much better than before. If we now take a look at the calibration panel, let's go ahead and bring down the blue primary hue. What we can see is we're adding more Zion to the blue background, but the foreground consisting mostly of yellow and green tones is changing as well. Why is that? We need to keep in mind every individual pixel of an image is made up of red, green and blue parts. The way these three parts are blending together decides how this particular pixel will appear on the screen. The HSL settings will change things that appear to be blue, like for example the blue background. The calibration tool however will affect every pixel in the image because every single pixel is made up of RGB. By adjusting the sliders in the calibration panel, we will change how RGB blends together on a way finer level. That's also why pushing the saturation within the calibration panel looks so much better than pushing the overall saturation in the basic adjustments. But with all that being said, it's kind of hard to know beforehand what you want to adjust here since the results are so unpredictable. This is something that might come with 
experience, but my approach is to always start with the blue primary hue, bringing it down very gently and raising the saturation, because I just like the look of it. Then from this point on, I decide to do some further adjustments, playing around with the other sliders. Usually, I add a little more saturation to red and green, and I might play around with the hue, but in most cases, I don't need to do that. So what's the difference? Use HSL to target specific colors you want to change, like in this case, making the flowers look a little more orange, the grass greener, and the background a little darker. Calibration, on the other hand, is the perfect tool to add some creative color grading, shifting all the colors, adding saturation in a very pleasing way, or simply fixing color cast of your camera, which was the intended way to use this tool, by the way. So. This is looking great color-wise, and we're pretty much done with the tutorial part of this video. Now what I want to do is to clean up this image a little bit in Photoshop. So let's go right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Right away I'm hitting Ctrl J. This will create a backup layer just in case I mess something up. And then I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Let's see where we can find it right here. And I want to get rid of a few things in the background because they are super distracting. You could use the new AI remove tool as well. However, it's causing my Photoshop to crash a lot. So I'm not going to use it in this case. And we have a very simple background. So the spot healing brush should be fine in this case. And that's the only tricky area. Again, the clone stand tool should do a good job in here. Okay, wonderful. And here we have the finished image. So I hope that this tutorial was able to explain the difference between HSL and calibration a little more. If you have any questions about that or anything else, or even if you want to add anything, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.